Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to be making the Travel Art Journal set that we made at Metacon in September in Tennessee 2018. I am going to be using the exact kit that we used at Metacon and then for those of you who didn't make it to Metacon, I did put all my leftover kits for sale uh, a little over a week ago in my Etsy shop and for those of you who were lucky enough to get one of those kits, um, you, you can pull that out and it's the exact same thing we did at Metacon. Now, for those of you who did not get uh, one of those kits or did not attend Metacon, I did decide to make a printable template for you guys. And originally, the, the um, printable templates were supposed to be part of the Wanderlust printable mini album template. So, I'm going to do a dedicated video just for that. Um, and that'll be tomorrow. So this video should go up Thursday and then that video should go up Friday. But if I have enough time, I'm going to go ahead and make those templates available for you guys. So if you wanted to check that out, I'll have a link for that down below. But I wanted to show you really quick what it looked like. Um, this is the title sheet. Um, it's called the Wonderless Printable Palettes and Folders. And again, it was meant to go into the Wonderless. I'll go into that. Um, in tomorrow's video, but it's for all three sizes. It's very reasonably priced and you'll get the uh, printable palette and you'll get the printable folder. Now the only thing different uh, for this is the small, this is the, the actually the small size, um, is that you won't get the artwork on this folder. There won't be anything um, on any of the folders they're just going to be blank plain with this just the distressed edges but this was the original artwork and this was specifically for Metacon so it was special for that class so you will not be getting uh, the artwork and here is the actual original artwork that I did for that folder isn't that pretty but you will not be getting that artwork on your folder so they're all just going to be plain they're not going to have any background designs on them or anything so that'll be the main difference, but there will be one for each size. There'll be a small, medium, and a large. They all come together in one little bundle. So you'll get the palettes and you'll get the folders. And they are smaller than the Wonderlust templates themselves. They're meant to go into pockets or uh, be sewn in or an addition to or put under the elastic. Um, they're not the exact size of the printable templates. The Wonderlust printable templates. So, but anyway, I'll get into all of that um, in the next video. But I'm super excited about it because I use them all the time. I've got them in everything that I own practically um, because I like to have some of the, you know, watercolors and some of the Caran d'Ache wax pastels, water soluble wax pastels. I like to have those things with me. I mean, the original idea came from Jenny Belly. Uh, she did a whole video on travel a DIY travel art journals, or not art journals, DIY travel palettes. So the whole idea came from her. I will link that video down below. It was years and years and years ago, but I think it's a brilliant idea and I've been using it ever since. And if I can, I'll try to find the original palette that I made way back when. I don't know if I still have it or not, but anyways. So you guys have seen me use this um, palette several times in several videos. Whoops paper towel and I've been using the same paper towel over and over and over again so you have seen me use this palette this is the same palette that we used in class um, and there's the back side I don't know if you're going to be able to see very well but it has held up really well I printed this onto um, watercolor paper so you guys have I've been using this for a long 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 time and you guys have uh, seen me use it several times so I am gonna we are gonna do one thing differently when it comes to these palettes um, which is no big deal. It's just gonna, um, I think, help protect it just a little bit more. And I have uh, put m paint on this, I can't tell you, countless times. I have put more paint on this probably eight to ten times over the course of five to six months. That's how long I've had these uh, travel palettes, this travel palette actually prepped. But, <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna do. We're going to be uh, making the folder and the art journal and doing a really quick little bit of watercoloring. Just a quick little idea. Plus, it was part of the class. So, I was going to show you guys that. I will also have linked down below an Amazon list with just the supplies that I used if you want to check them out, I guess. 
it just makes it easier. I've discovered that if I have specific Amazon lists for you guys to go look, everything that I used will be there. So if you want to check it out, you want to see what else is available, um, different quantities, all of that jazz, um, you can check that list out and it just makes it convenient. Okay, so let's go on. I'm going to show you everything that was provided, uh, that I provided in the kit that everybody got. Everybody got a pouch. I also wanted to remind you, um, the pouches, the slider thingy, if, if it kind of acts weird and it won't, you know, close, just press it and it'll close every time. So I just kind of, it's just a piece, it's just a plastic little piece there. Even if it pops off, you can put it back on um, and it will close. If you give it a little bit of a squeeze, um, it will close every time. So I just kind of wanted to remind you guys of that. So I'm going to move the post-it notes, the card, and the... Um, ruler and we're not even going to be using uh, we're going to be using the um this is a sharpie pen um it just happens to have my logo on it maybe there we go so we are going to be using the sharpie pen and uh, we're not going to be using the pencil or the marker so i'm going to move that stuff aside also in the kit there is a ranger Mini Mister. Looks like that. Well, maybe. Goodness gracious. There's a Ranger Mini Mister. And then a Nuvo, a Tonic Nuvo water brush. Now, I have water in both of mine. Um, oh, here it is. So this is what the packages look like. The Nuvo water brush comes in a pack of two. There is a fine and a medium water brush. Which one is this one? This one is a medium, but each class kit only has one. And then the Ranger Mini Misters, they come in a pack of three, which is really cool because you can do all kinds of fun things with these little Mini Misters. But anyway, so those are those two packages. If you want to check that out, so we're going to be using both of those. And then inside of here, let me grab everything out and move the plastic out of the way there is a jelly roll number 10 jelly roll pen and then there's paper clips there's a rusted binder, binder clip and there's needle and thread and then also was provided also I provided I don't know why I keep saying was provided the already printed travel palette that I printed onto a watercolor paper and then I added the paints and then down here I used some matte medium as a, a mixing area and then I also provided a pre-stamped um, watercolor card with the flowers on it and then uh, here is the folder now I had the folder professionally printed. I had this one printed onto really heavy like poster board type um, material. I, you can't print this at home on the poster board. I don't think. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it'd be kind of tough. But I did have this one professionally printed. And then also in the kits, I provided a large sheet of watercolor paper. So the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to, oh, let me tell you what paint I used. I used the Daniel Smith uh, Watercolor Primatech set, and this is a set of six, and these are cool because some of them are sparkly, and that is because they're made from gemstones, actual gemstones, like the purple is actual amethyst gemstone. So the first thing I want to do, and I didn't do this uh, ahead of time, um, I didn't do this for the kits, but I think that it might help. Like, let me show you the difference between one I've used for a long time and a new one. You see the difference in the back, right? This, this is still pretty smooth, and this is all dimpled and wrinkly and all of that jazz. You see the difference? Um, I didn't put anything on the back side of here. So on this one, I am going to put some matte medium on the back of this palette and let it dry while we're putting our folder together okay so this is the matte medium i'm going to use this is my favorite this is ranger multi-medium matte 
And I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take, this is just like a, um, a silicone brush. This one is actually from Hobby Lobby. This is Master's Touch, um, and it's a one inch. You don't have to, you can just use a regular brush. Um, but I find that I'm really terrible about uh, cleaning uh, my, my brushes out quick enough. Like I'll put them in the water, but then um, I'll kind of forget. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm just going to put like a coat on the back of this palette. It doesn't have to be a super thick coat, I don't think. And I'm using the plastic that the um, palettes came in for the class just because it's right here. Convenient. And I'm just going to put a quick coat on there. And I'm not even concerned if it um, is even or not. And I think I'm going to lift it up off of there. And I'm just going to set it aside and let that dry. So now I'm going to take my silicone brush here. And I'm just going to wipe it clean. And then done. No worries. Wiped it on a paper towel. So I'm going to let that back of that palette dry really quick. And then let's go ahead and start to cut this out. So if you've got an actual kit, this poster board is super, super, super thick. Poster board. I don't know if it's poster board. I forget what weight he told me it was. But any who's. You just need to be careful in certain areas. This is a Fiskars Precision Rotary Paper Trimmer. So when you start like cutting through here and this little tricky part there, um, you just need to be really careful or you're going to crack the um, card sock. But again, the templates are available. Uh, the printable version of the palettes are available and you can print them onto cardstock. You can print them onto 140 pound cardstock, but again, I'll get more into that um, in the next video. So that's all I can do with my paper trimmer. So then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut, make little, with smaller scissors. The big scissors will tear, like right here when you turn, you need to be really careful to not rip. So I'm, I'm not even gonna go all the way. I'm just gonna cut just a little bit and then I'm gonna come back with my bigger scissors to make more of a clean cut there. And then, I know it seems kinda silly, but if you don't want it to tear in any, in any weird spot, you just kinda have to take your time and use two different sets of scissors <laughs> because um, you don't want anything to tear. Okay, so I'm not going to cut that part yet. I'm going to wait until we score it to cut that. I'm going to notch that. I can cut this. shaky today. I haven't ate yet. I was trying to get this recorded. Um, and I haven't recorded in a couple weeks and it just feels so strange. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you, when you haven't done something in a while, you know, it's like you got to get back in the, in the rhythm of things. So I hope this isn't too choppy of a video. I am going to cut some of that excess off there. And then I'm gonna try to cut this. You see how shaky I am? I need to get me something to eat. Aha! All right, then I'm gonna get my scoreboard. This is an EK Tool scoreboard and EK Tool stylus. And I'm gonna score everything that needs to be scored. All 
I hope y'all cannot hear my tummy. <laughs> it's, wow, it's so loud. Well, for me, it's loud. I didn't even cut that straight. Hmm. Maybe I'll go back and trim that later. And then I'm going to cut or cut. Then I'm going to score these two over here. Did I get that one? Yeah. All right, first thing I want to do is I'm going to flip both of these pockets up so that I can trim that piece off there. Flip that one up. This is a Teflon bone folder. Okay. So I'm going to flip that over now and I'm going to cut it right across the bottom. Now I've got a clean, straight cut and no tearing at all. All right, so then I'm going to flip this up. And flip these over. Burnish them down. Now with this really thick poster boardy type material, you will get a little bit of cracking. But that's okay, because I like that look. It's not going to um, tear anything up. It's not going to... Um, hurt the finished product. Put those over. Do you see how that's not cut right? So I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold this one. I'll try to fold this one. like that. So it's going to go like this. Okay. But before we put it together, I think I am going to ink um, a little bit. How's my palette doing? It's getting there. And I still have my walnut stain still sitting here. So I'm just going to use it. This is um, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. And I want to ink the inside just because I can't I can't take it being so stark white. I think this one, where's my other one? Yeah, see this one's stark white, <laughs> which is fine, but I don't know. I kind of like the not stark white. So I'm just adding us a little bit of color. And then after we get it put together, then we can add the um, ink on the outside. And one of the things that I do want to add to this that I did not add in class, um, we didn't do this in class, but I added a magnet to keep this closed like that. Um, it doesn't keep this part from like flopping open, but it does keep the base of it kind of closed together. So I'm going to add a magnet. Now, when should I add the magnet? I added the magnet, um, obviously, later. I think it would be easier to add the magnet now or add at least one side of the magnet the harder side this side here all right let's do that i will have a link down below to these magnets from the magnet baron these are super thin and super strong these are only like a quarter of an inch um, in thickness you see that they're only they're teeny tiny so I think what I'll do is I'm just going to use a, a dab of glue and I'm going to put it, this is art glitter glue, and I'm just going to put it here on the edge, on the top edge here. that. 
All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. Oh, careful about that magnet. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna add some tape. This is scrapbook.com. This is quarter of an inch, strong, double-sided adhesive. Those are Tim Holtz scissors, tonic, little mini snips that I've finally gotten used to using. Oh, and by the way, these were EK Tools um, Cutter Bee scissors. I'm pretty sure that's what those are. And I'm going to burnish that tape down just a little bit. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to start with this side here. And I'm going to remove the backing. Um, before, but I'm also going to add some liquid glue to this because uh, I don't want it, you know, if it cut, if if it comes in contact with any sort of moisture from the palette or painting or whatever, I don't want it to come apart. So I am going to use that, that glue for like reinforcement, double, double duty, just a little bit of extra strength there. That's all. And then over here, same thing. I'm going to roll one. I'm going to be, I'm going to remove the backing here, and I'm going to put some glue. Okay, so for this one, you just want to line it up, make it like a square bottom, and then line it up along the edge, there, like that, and then press. I'm going to take my bone folder, and I think it'll go in there, yep, and just press that down, just like that. Oh, I probably should have done this magnet first instead of the other one. Well, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That's okay. I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna guess at to where the glue needs to be. And then I'm just gonna stick a little dot in there. See that came apart really quickly because I yanked on it. And then I'm gonna grab this. Okay, so I had it right. And I'm gonna stick this under here like this. And it should grab onto it, and it did. I don't know if you guys could see that or not, but it did. It grabbed right onto it. So I'm just going to let that sit for now. And you can see that it's holding it closed, which is good. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then uh, we'll come back and finish, finish it up. Okay, it is dry now. The magnet is dry, pretty sure. Yep, yep. And I did go through and ink uh, the edges, took all the white, just knocked all the white off of all the edges. So now the folder is finished and the back of the palette is completely dry, which is good. Um, now it can be now it can be protected from any sort of moisture uh, that may come in contact with it. And it might even protect it a little bit better um, from warping like my other palette did. So that goes in here like that. And then um, I have a paper towel that I folded up to fit inside of here like that. So that's that part. So now let's make the, the uh, little travel art journal. This is the one um, whoops. this is the one that I have in here, so I don't think I've done a whole lot in this one, nope, um, but I did, in a minute we're getting ready to do this painting right here, but I did attach it to the front of this cover, um, and then this was another one that I was thinking about doing for the class, and then another one over here. Um, but I did attach these down because they were loose. Um, but anyway, so it's a cute little travel art journal. And it's super, super, super simple. So in the uh, class kit 
This is what was given to you guys. This is a sheet of watercolor paper, and it is Canson. Uh, this one happens to be 12 by 18 inches, so this is 140-pound code press uh, watercolor paper. And so all I did was I folded it in half to go into the um, into the plastic bag to make it easier for the kids. But what we're going to do is we're just going to rip this in half. And this is actually enough for two journals to fit inside the little, let me get the one we just made, to fit inside your little travel folder there. So I'm going to set one aside. So I fold it in half. Then we're just going to fold it in half again. And you'll notice I'm just tearing it. Um, I'm just going to crease that really good with my bone folder there because I like that look, right? So if you don't like that look, well, then you can just um, use your paper trimmer. So then I'm going to fold it in half again and rip that in half and then fold this in half. Okay, so that is, um, you don't rip any further. That's as small as you go. And I'm going to fold this one in half, like that. So they're going to go inside of each other. And then I'm going to fold this one in half. Oops, I didn't do a very good job. This is super thick paper, 140-pound um, watercolor papers can be pretty thick. So then I'm going to fold this in half, and then fold this one in half. Okay, so in the end, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. So let me get my little baggie of stuff. So this is just crochet thread. You could use whatever you have. Wax linen, you could use um, yarn if you have it. It doesn't matter, just use whatever. So I'm gonna take two paper clips and we'll paper clip it together. And I am gonna use a pokey tool. This is a Tim Holtz tonic paper piercer. And I think in the class, I think we only use two holes, but um, yeah, there's only two holes there. But we're going to go ahead and use three holes. So I'm going to find the center around about. And want to poke a hole at top. Poke a hole at the bottom. So now there's three holes. Right? No big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. Obviously, you don't need all of this for just one uh, journal, but it's enough for two. This is just, uh, this is a really big eyed needle. Whoa. Oh, I forgot to mention, since this one, this is a really big needle, so I'm going to go and do a little wiggle wiggle in the hose that I poked. Um, and this is just a simple little stitch um, that I've done a bunch of times. It's quick, it's easy, especially for something like this, something small. I'm going to start on the outside and pull it through. You could start on the inside if you want it to. Either way, um, I'm going to go to the top hole and come back out. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom hole like that. I'm going to try to hold on to my thread there. Come back in. Then I'm going to go back into the center hole. And I want to be on the other side of that middle thread there and I'm going to tug both ways and then I'm going to tie just an oops I'm going to try to tie a knot just like that and then I'm just going to cut it And then there is the quick little art journal. I'm going to burnish that just a little bit. And then, where's my paper towel? I rested these a while back, but 
um, you know, sometimes you, the little rust particles want to fall off. I just like to take a paper towel and just kind of rub it to get anything that's loose on it off. It just makes it just makes it cleaner, in my opinion. Anyways, so if you clean it up a little bit, it's not near as messy. Um, or just use one that's not rusted. Either way. Okay, so that is the art journal that goes inside of the folder. Okay, so then the last thing is the little card that I uh, provided in the kits. And this is the watercolor. I'm just gonna use, um, this is watercolor paper. I'm just gonna use the other half of that paper, that watercolor sheet that I had provided. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Um, instead of making two art journals, I'm gonna tear this down um, to be the approximate size there of the art journal. So I'm just going to show you really quickly how I come up with uh, that. And then photo one more time. Right? Just like that. Okay. So it's the same size. See, it's the same uh, size as the piece uh, that I have stamped on. All right. So I'm going to show you how I got that. I'm going to scoot you in. I'm going to try to anyway. There we go. So all I did, let me get something, let me get this out since I used this once already. All I did was I took, this is antique linen. You guys have seen me do this before. Uh, sometimes they call it no line coloring, um, but what's really cool about this technique is you take something really faint, like this is antique linen, Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, it's just a really soft, light color. You take something really faint and you stamp with it, then you can watercolor over top of it and it almost disappears. So what I would used in it for this, for our class, for that image, this is a Stampendous um, wood mount stamp. And I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Yep, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I've had it forever. but. What you want to look for when you're looking for stamps to do this technique is uh, stamps with a lot of open space. That way um, you don't have as much ink laid down. It's just more of an outline. So all I did was I took my stamp, I put some ink on it, and I'm going to stamp it off just a little bit on my plastic there, and then I'm just going to stamp it onto the... Um, watercolor paper and you can barely barely see that do you see now when i did these i had to do a whole bunch so i didn't do the stamp off part um because you can kind of see the difference you know, when you stamp off versus when you don't but i would prefer to have it where you stamp off first and then you stamp onto your watercolor paper it's really, really, really hard to see. I'm going to do it one more time. Stamp off. So that's all I did. It's just something as simple as that. I'm not even sure if you can really even see it. So I'm going to set this aside. But for this demonstration, <laughs> I am going to use the one that you can really see um, versus the one that I would prefer to use because this will disappear a lot easier than these lines will disappear if that makes sense. So I'm going to set that one. I'm just going to actually put that one here inside my folder. Oh, I need this. So now we're going to need your palette and I better scoot over just a little bit. Your palette and your paper towel, your water brush. Oh, no, wrong water brush. That one was empty. Water brush and mini mister. So we're just gonna do a really quick little um, watercolor painting. So what I'm gonna start with is, I'm gonna take my lid off, there we go. This one is a medium and I've used this obviously. I better clean that off actually. So all you do is it, there's a, a little thing that says press there, you just, press there to get the water to come down into the brush. Um, can you see that on my finger there? 
And then I think I'm going to take my mini mister here and I'm going to go ahead and get some of these watercolors wet. I think I'm going to start with a purple. Right, so I'm just going to get that a little bit wet, get it going. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is just kind of lay down some color. I'm not going to be too worried about detail. Um, so I'm just going to start with like a wash of color. And you don't even have to worry about staying in the lines, not really. Um, again, it's just kind of like a wash. And you don't even have to fill the whole thing in if you don't want to. You can leave some white space. Whoa, that one got a little bit more pigment versus water. So this one is the purple. This is the amethyst color, amethyst genuine. So when it dries, it has a bit of a sparkle. Right, so that's simple, right? And then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and mist the pink here as well. And I'm gonna put some down here in my mixing area. And I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and spray that yellow because we're gonna make like an orangey color here in a second. So then I'm gonna just do the same thing with this pink color. I forget what this one's called. This pink color, I'll have to look really quick. And you can just see, I'm just being really sloppy about it. And then I'm gonna mix some of this yellow and some of this pink and get kind of like a, a peachy color. Not really orange, but more of like a peachy color. And I'm just gonna do the same thing for this flower over here. Uh, like an orangey, peachy, corally, I don't know what color you'd call this exactly. Let me see what that pink is real quick. That pink is Rhodonite Genuine. That's what that pink is. The yellow is not in that mix. That's uh, Hansa yellow, something like that. I'm also going to go ahead and spray this black because I'm going to put some of this uh, black, which is actually hematite. That's the name of it. It's an actu actually the hematite... Um, stone. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the center just a little bit, just a little dab. Maybe a little bit more of a dab over here. Right? And so then I want to let that dry, but I also want to kind of block in some color. Um, sky color. I should have just sprayed the whole palette as well. The only color I don't think I'm going to be using is going to be the green currently. <laughs> but I'm just going to block in not really sky, but like this background is going to be like this blue color. So I'm just going to like do a quick little um, wash of color. Again, not being real careful, just um, just getting some color on there. I like the real sketchy look, you know, the kind that, um, I just stuck my hand in that puddle of water, the sketchy kind of watercolor, and so I like it to be a little bit more loose. So can you see, it's just kind of like laid down like a first layer of color, but you could stop there. It looks pretty cool just like that, just real soft. Um, but I'm going to show you how to add some detail. But I want to let it dry first. Okay, just real quick, I also wanted to mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, I pointed out this was a 12 by 18 uh, watercolor pad. Uh, you can also get it in 9 by 12 so you, you know, don't have to rip down the one more piece or it saves you one more rip. <laughs> um, it just comes in different sizes. I just like the torn edge, so I like to start off bigger and work my way down to smaller. Uh, because this way, like this piece, there's only one edge that's not um, torn. So, I, I don't know. I just like the torn look. So, so anyways. All right. So, now let's do a little bit of detail. Let's go back to the purple. And I'm going to get 
um, more purple onto my brush, but less water, more pigment. And I'm just gonna kind of start at the base and I'm just gonna defi define <laughs> some of these, um, some of these details. And you know, you don't have to go too crazy. Just kind of to like give it a little bit more definition where the petals might be curling or there might be veins or something like that. But it just adds that little extra bit of detail without doing a whole, whole lot. And the stamp helps a lot too. Um, depending on what kind of stamp you have, that gives you a lot of um, assistance where to put your detail. So I suggest you go looking through your stamps and find one um, that meets all that criteria. So you just go back and you could do this. You could go back and add this detail a whole bunch of times. You just go back and add layer after layer after layer. Um, but watercolor, it does most of the work for you. It blends nicely and it's just really soft and pretty. Whoop, my glasses just fell off the top of my head. Um, I need to change my battery. Shoot. Okay, so I got my battery changed. Um, I'm hoping that that'll help with the focus issues I'm having. So, so anyway, you just go through and you just do, you just work on one petal at a time. And you may even want to skip a petal in between petals. But you could do this with any stamp that you have that gives you like a lot of empty space. To work in. And then I am going back and adding a little bit more, uh, a more dark purple at the base there for depth right so just that little bit of detail really makes a difference Got my piece in the in the yellow there. <laughs> oh, whoopsie. I like having like a little puddle of just water over here too. That way I don't have to squeeze so much out of my water brush. And you can use whatever water brush you have. You do not have to use this one. This is just what happened to what I happen to be able to get a hold of for my classes. Um, I have Tim Holtz water brushes. I have Jane Davenport water brushes. I have uh, lots of different types of water brushes. So just use whatever. Some lay down more water than others at any given moment. See, it just makes such a big difference. Okay. And if you didn't want to use a water brush, you could just use a paintbrush. You don't have to even use a water brush. You can just use a watercolor brush, um, like a really small, round watercolor brush, um, and some water. The watercolor brushes are nice. I mean, the water brushes 
are nice for travel. So you can go ahead and have your water in there ready to go. You don't have to have extra things with you. Um, I'll just get my palette. I'm going to flip it around this way. Since I'm working in the purple, my palette keeps walking away from me. And, you know, once again, you guys, I, I know I tell you this all the time. I am not a professional watercolor artist at all. Um, I, I, you know, I do it for fun. I don't, I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. And if you really want to know, you know, learn specifics and things, then I suggest you watch The Frugal Crafter, Lindsay from The Frugal Crafter. She's a fantastic artist and she teaches, you know, things. Teaches you things about, I'm sorry, I got lost in what I was doing. She can teach you things about watercolor that I have, you know, have no idea anything about those things. So if you want to learn more technical stuff besides just playing like I'm doing, then I'll go watch her channel. I will link her channel below. She's great. So anyway, so then you can just let that dry. And then if you wanted to, you could come back and add more detail. So I'm going to quickly do the pink one and the peachy one and then I'll be back. And, and I'm doing it in the same manner, nothing different. I'm just going and adding just a little bit of detail. Okay, so I just added a little bit more detail. I added a little bit more stronger of a pink over here um, on this flower. So it's not just so peachy. It's got a little bit more of a pink vibe to it as well. And then I think, I don't even know if you guys are going to be able to pick up on this. I'm going to try to get close here. Come on. Can you guys see the sparklies? I hope you can. They're really kind of sparkly. The purple is. Um, I can't tell about the pink. But I certainly, I mean, I can see. It's like granulated. I can see it. Uh, I don't know if you're going to pick up very good on the camera. Anyways. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to go through and add some water to the blue areas and then I'm going to make some of it just a little bit darker in, 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 in spots. And you can't really mess up with watercolor because it reactivates with water so if you don't like something you can just hit it with some water, move it around, or even blot it off with your paper towel. So you just really can't mess up. You just can't mess up um, on your watercolor. You just can't. Okay, now I think I'm going to come back with a little bit more of that black and the hematite anyway and add just a little bit more to the center and just like in little dots. All right, that looks pretty cool. So now I need to let this dry again. And then I'll be back. Well, you see how where I put that medium down here at the bottom? And 
and that puddle of water there, it is sitting on top of it. So it's really cool. I would flip it over, but then I would spill it all over the place. But it's really cool how you can just do something that simple and you've got, you know, your paint and your palette all in one um, mixing palette, all in one little card here. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll finish it up. Okay, it's all dry. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, during class, if, if you don't like the look of this, where's my other one? If you don't like the look of this next step, then then don't do it. You don't don't feel like you have to do it. Um, because during uh, the Metacon class, some people, they liked it all the way up until this point until we started adding like the sketchy kind of markings all over it. So they liked it up until that point. So if you don't think you're going to like the look of the sketchy, you know, then you don't even have to do it. But I would suggest you try it to see if you do like it. Um, you don't know until you try. So maybe do, you know, a quick little flower, paint it, and then do this. So this is just a black sharpie pen this one is um mine uh and so i'm just gonna like sketch just kind of sketch around with really um kind of sketchy marks i don't know how else to to <laughs> to say it but i'm just kind of defining the outside of the petals not so much each individual um wrinkle and crinkle inside the petal just kind of like the outside and then you don't even also you don't even have to worry about uh, staying in the lines I mean the, the whole point of this type of painting is it for it to be loose and carefree you know so it looks real sketchy I just love whimsical is that a good word for it I just love the way it looks so it just kind of defined the outer petals not so much all the little markings on the inside so I'm going to continue to do that for the other two. And then I like to do it around the center of the flower as well. And then let's see, how did I paint this? Okay, let's do this one. And then you can also now decide which which uh, petals are going to be in the front and which ones are going to be pushed towards the back, right? No right or wrong way, right? So just something simple like that. No big deal. It's real quick. Um, and I just think it just adds a special little something something to it. So then the next thing I want to do is, I keep wanting to take that lid off. I'm going to get my black wet, my hematite. It's not really black. It's more of like a brownish um, black, for lack of a better description. I'm just going to get it really wet. And, oops, let me grab something. Put it underneath here. Go back to my plastic that the kit came in. And I'm just going to get it really wet, and then I'm going to flick. Well, I'm going to try to. I'm just going to flick some splattery type um, effects all over the painting. Again, you do not have to do this. If you don't like this look, then you just skip this part. I don't know. It just adds a little fun detail for me. Again, on the whimsical side. Put that aside. All right, um, that'll dry pretty quick. Wipe my brush off. At least I hope. So then I'm gonna take the jelly roll number 10. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, have I used this one? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes they come with like a little thing on the end and once you take it off, you know, it's usable. Um, and I didn't want to, uh, ex like, officially open another one if, if, I, if this one wasn't open. All right, so I'm going to make sure it's working on my skin there. No big deal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some details to some of these 
petals. It's just some little highlights, if you will. Um, this particular stamp had like little stamen thingies coming out of the center, even though we didn't like um, paint those per se, but we can just go and add the impression of those being there. It's just a, a, a nice little detail um, just to add to the, the whimsical look of it. And I'm going in like in a little circle, you know, almost. And then if you really wanted to, you could take the same pen. And if like it was too dark in some places, you could lighten it up in certain areas. But I like the way mine has turned out. So I'm not going to. But can you see the little white dots now? It's just something cute, right? And I think it looks really cool. So that's all I'm going to do with that. And then let me get this off my hand. Then I'm going to take my Sharpie once again, and I'm going to put my initials on it. And I might even put the date. What is today's date? Today is November 14th. So I'm going to put 11, 14, 18, right? And so like with my other art journal, I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to add it, I think, to the cover of this one as well. So it should fit right on there, just perfect, just like that. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue, or your matte medium, if you wanted to use your matte medium. Um, if you had that out and you wanted to use that, that'll work too. I'm just going to go and add some to the back side of this. Smoosh that out just a little. And then I'm going to add it to the cover. You don't have to do this. You can just have a bunch of loose pieces. That would be fine too. But since it was part of the kit, I just wanted to go ahead and use it as the cover. So let me open that up. And just make sure it's got good contact. Right? And so there it is. There is the finished DIY a travel art journal and a folder. I have um, that extra piece. Oh, that reminds me. Let me take that out. You know what else you could do? While we're letting, we should probably, I should probably, in order for my palette to dry so I can put it up, I'm going to dab away that color there. And then hopefully any puddle, hopefully the rest of it will dry while I'm showing you this. The same way, I'm going to go ahead and rip this down. The same way we did before, except I'm going to rip it down into individual pieces. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make a little pad here. Just like I do... Um, just like I did these, where my leftover cutoff pieces, this is that Rodea paper, I make a little notepad out of. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Let me find some clips. And let me get a bigger one. So this is also something I learned from uh, the Frugal Crafter, except she uses hot glue, so, and I have done that before too, but I almost never have my hot glue out, I'm all, but I've always got this kind of glue sitting here. So I'm just going to run a really generous amount of glue there. Matter of fact, I think I just saw her do this a couple videos back. And I forget what she was making. Oh, it was a round watercolor um, book. All right, so I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to uh, clip it down right there and kind of keep it close and tight. And then I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let this dry and hopefully my palette will dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, I think, I think it's dry. Pretty sure. Take all my clips off. 
and I'm not going to tear it apart right now, but you can see they're all connected. So once you get your little block made, you can have that instead of your art journal. So that's cool too. Instead of making, you know, like a sewn art journal, you can just have like a block. So therefore you can take it along, do your sketches, do your watercoloring, all of that jazz, and then you can tear it off and put it somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and put my palette back in. I'm thinking it's pretty dry. I'm um, almost positive it's dry. My paper towel's not 100% dry, but my palette is dry, and it did warp just a little bit, but not like my other one did. Not like this one. And But again, this one I've used so many times. I can't even count the times. I mean, check it out, right? So... So the ones that you got from the kit, from the uh, Maticon kits, they do have my name at the bottom of the palette, um, as you can see there. But the template that I've made for you guys does not have my name on the palette. Um, if I can get this back in here. There we go. <laughs> um, it doesn't have my name on the palette. And it doesn't have my name on the folder like this one does. This has all my information down here. Um, again, you don't get the artwork for the new templates, but that'll be the next video. We'll talk more about that in the next video. But, but that's it. That's all there is to it. So if you wanted to, you could put your name here. Um, you could do a quick little sketch there. You could put the year, the month, the whatever. You do whatever you want in that little spot there. Um, but that's as easy as that. That is how simple it is to make your own little DIY art journal and palette and um, little sketchbook. I guess that's like a sketchbook. What did this be called? Like a sketch block. Not a sketch block. Well, that is it, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you give it a try. Even if you don't get the templates, um, again, video coming, even if you don't get the printable templates, at least you could try making your own little uh, art journal, DIY art journal, or your own little art block here um, out of whatever paper you want to use, whether it's mixed media or watercolor, um, Bristol paper, all of that. Um, you can use whatever you want. Um, I hope you give it a try. So if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm sorry I've been gone for a while, you guys. Um, I missed you guys. I'm feeling kind of like a fish out of water at the moment because <laughs> um, I haven't recorded in a couple weeks. But, but um, anyway, um, but do let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Um, and here's a link to my Etsy shop if you want to check out the new uh, printable templates that I'm going to uh, be doing a dedicated video on next. Um, and there should be some videos up here that you may enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.